Nick Schwab um, is American. He came all the way from the US to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he came um, to speak about his uh, experiences building Alexa skills that reach right now up to 250,000 people per month. Um, it's very early days in the whole uh, space. And let's just see what he does, how he does it, and what he envisions for the future of Amazon Alexa. Welcome, Nick. Hey, I'm Nick Schwab, uh, founder of Invoked Apps, and you're probably wondering, all right, why is this American English-speaking person on stage? Um, I just want to say thank you for having me here. Uh, Germans have been extremely hospitable to me. You guys are awesome. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Um, so I'm Nick Schwab, at Nick Schwab on Twitter. Um, and I am a software engineer at Ford Motor Company. So how many folks here drive a Ford vehicle? A, a four-wheel. A, fo a Ford vehicle. A, a Ford. A Ford. A Ford. We all drive Audis here. <laughs> really? No Ford? <laughs> Come on. That's all right. Well, I'm, I'm on the team that builds this, the Sync software. So the software that allows you to have an app on your smartphone and then project it onto the car's dashboard. And then in my free time, uh, I build apps for Amazon Alexa and some other voice-based experiences or platforms. And I'm also an Amazon Alexa champion. So Amazon has uh, recognized me uh, in the developer community as a go-to point for other developers to ask for help, um, give feedback about skills, and things like that. Um, and then as far as the skills themselves, I've published 25 on Alexa. And I've also published five Microsoft Cortana skills and one Google Action, which when you add all that up between my job and all these skills, that means I have zero free time. <laughs> So what does this voice platform look like in the world? Right now, we have Amazon Alexa with the Echo, the Echo Dot. Uh, the Echo Show just came out, which has a, display, a touch screen display. Um, and there are a couple more as well. We have Google Home, which is currently the only product that Google offers as a standalone device for voice-based experiences. And we have the Apple HomePod, which was recently announced at WWDC. Uh, unfortunately, developers can't actually make anything for that yet. They haven't actually announced an SDK. And then there's Microsoft Cortana, which I didn't have a great image to put on here, so I didn't include it. Um, and basically, building a skill for Microsoft Cortana is very, very similar to that of Alexa and Google Home. It's, it's really amazing how similar all these platforms are when you're building for them and when you're trying to market your skills. So for the focus of this presentation, I'm going to focus on Alexa, because that is where the most consumers are and the most developers are. Um, you know, not, not just in the US, but also in the UK and Germany. Uh, so when I built my first skill in March of 2016, uh, it was a skill called Bargain Buddy, and it looked up the daily deal from a website called Woot.com. I don't know if there are any fans of Woot, Woot out here. Um, they were actually bought by Amazon. Small note there. And a site called Meh.com. Uh, it only had 20 weekly users when I launched it, so it's not exactly a smashing success. My second skill, a month later, um, I released it to about 200 weekly users. So I made an improvement, um, but it's still not a huge audience, right? Like, I didn't, I didn't hit the mark yet. And that skill was to look up the stock prices of any publicly traded uh, company in the United States. And then my third skill, I kind of went back in time. I only had three weekly users. So clearly, whatever I did there, I needed to stop doing it, because it was wrong. Um, so that was a skill that actually took some news headlines and read them out in a funny way. Side note, Alexa is not that great at being uh, comical. She just, she just can't do it uh, yet. So my fourth skill is when things really started taking off. Uh, that was my first ambient noise skill. And I launched this in October of 2016 to an audience of about 4,000 users within the first week and a half or so. So at this point, I knew, all right, here is what a successful skill actually looks like in terms of audience adoption. And you know, what, did, what did I do in that process to earn those users? Um, and to give you an idea of what the adoption rate of a good skill looks like, here's a nice little graph. 
Um, so on this graph, you can see like the red line on the bottom. That is actually uh, three skills, essentially. Uh, my opening bell stock lookup skill, um, my bargain buddy skill, and my funny news skill. Um, the, the user adoption on those was just horrible. But then you see the green line, which is my rain sound skill. That was the very first ambient noise skill that I launched for Alexa. And then you see a couple other ones that I launched around the same time, which were thunderstorm sounds and ocean sounds. Um, so just looking at this graph, you can tell, all right, in the first week and a half or two weeks, user adoption just went through the roof. So I kind of doubled down on this idea, and I said, all right, I'm going to start launching a whole array of new sounds. Uh, you know, babbling brook, uh, rainforest sounds, et cetera. And as I progressed, you know, from October 2016 to today, I currently have 250,000 weekly users, or about half a million users a month. Um, so how did I do this, and how can you do it? I don't have the magic bullet to do that, but I can give you some hints. Uh, start off by asking the question, why do you like your Amazon Echo or Google Home? Uh, this is a survey question that a company called Voice Labs did back in 2016, uh, December. And the majority of folks said, I really like playing music or listening to audiobooks on my device. And I can tell you personally that that is a huge use case for myself as well. Um, and then more users said, I like controlling my light switches and my thermostat using my voice. Uh, so that's why smart home devices came in, uh, came in second. And then equally as smart home devices, users said, I like to play games and use it for entertainment. But you'll note here that only 2.7% of respondents said that they wanted or that they enjoyed using Alexa for brand content. So how can we trick these people into using Alexa for brand content? Let's start by looking at some big brand skills that are currently available in the United States. Um, you know, big brands like Spider-Man, you know, Marvel, um, Starbucks, coffee everywhere, uh, Uber, your taxis, and Domino's Pizza. You know, all these skills, uh, for the most part, don't have tremendous ratings. They might have a lot of reviews, but if you look at their skill rating, they struggle to get over three stars. And why is this? Like, these are huge brands that offer a great service to people. Why aren't, why aren't these brands killing it up here? And then we look at the smaller brands, you know, just literally develop the independent developers that are building skills themselves, or maybe a small team of three. And we look at their reviews and their numbers, and you'll see some up here that have nearly a five-star review, or that have hundreds and hundreds of reviews. So what are these small brands doing that the big brands just don't get? And that's what I'm going to try to help you with today. The first thing you want to do when building an Alexa skill is know your goal. You need to know, do you want to entertain the user? Uh, this could be you know, playing a game. It could be trivia. It could be giving them the latest tweet from Donald Trump. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, or do you want to assist the user? Uh, things like smart home devices where you can control the lights or control your thermostat. Uh, things that are more convenient, that help the user day by day, or with other daily tasks, like, the, like my ambient noise skills, helping them fall asleep. Or do you want to inform them with news and sports scores, for example? And then once you know this, you can focus on the VUX. Does anybody know what VUX stands for? No. I don't. No? All right. It's the voice user experience. Just throw a V in front of UX and you got the UX. <laughs> so the voice user experience is essentially um, how users interact with your skill from the moment they see it in the skill store and the moment they end their session after they've been talking to it. And you want this to be a seamless experience. They need to know what the skill does the moment they see it in the skill store or enable it. And then the experience that they have while using your skill needs to be flawless, because the last thing you want is to annoy somebody as they're using the skill, because then they're going to abandon it and never come back. You need to also have a memorable name. Make sure your skill is e easy to remember, because unlike smartphones, where you can pull them out of our pocket, we can look at the list of apps that we've downloaded, you can't really do that with voice experiences. 
you, know, you enable a skill or you use a skill, and you have to remember the name. Because right now, um, with the exception of Google, there's, there's really no shortcuts that a user can define to say, hey, help me sleep. OK, you actually meant play thunderstorm sounds or play rain sounds. Um, so there's some, some natural language processing barriers that exist today, but I know they're being addressed uh, over time and hopefully soon. So here are some examples of skills that don't have a memorable name and do have a memorable name. So starfish band, you'd never guess it's a tracker for calorie consumption. Or lucky dip is a lottery number generator. You know, these skill names, while they're kind of clever, they don't really tell the user immediately what the skill does. And then you have skills like word master game or thunderstorm sounds where you, you pretty much understand exactly what you're going to get immediately. And then offer your users guidance. The first time you use a skill is the most critical time you can use to teach your users how to use it. This could be uh, the first time they open a skill, say how the game works. You know, what are the instructions of the game or the goal of the game? Or give some example commands of things that they can say throughout their experience. And then support natural voice commands. So with Alexa and Google Home and Cortana, uh, you have to teach these platforms how, to, how a user can interact with your skill. Um, you don't just want to limit the user to say, play rain sounds. You want to make sure that no matter what they say, it's going to hit the mark. So the best way to do this is to think as if you're talking to a person. What would you ask that person to do or tell that person to do if they were the device? So you'd want to make sure that you can say, play rain, play rain sounds, I want to hear rain, give me rain sounds, etc. And then make sure that your skill has adaptive behavior. The first time they use a skill, you know, back to this guidance point, um, you want to instruct them how they can use a skill. But then when they come back after their first session, or maybe their second session or third, you want to make sure that you're going to shortcut them back to the experience that they're expecting. Because who wants to sit there and literally hear the instructions every single time you open the skill? People have better things to do. And then offer contextual help. Um, this is a, a philosophy where as you use a skill, you want to make sure that at any time a user could say, help. And it would provide instructions around the exact point where they are in the interaction with your skill. And then make sure that your responses have variation. Um, saying things like great job over and over and over again get really boring, especially as you're testing your skills. I can tell you that firsthand. Uh, so make sure that you change it up a bit. You know, pick some responses at random. Say, great job, nice work, well done, way to go. I mean, they all mean the same thing in, in sentiment, but when you hear them, it just it provides a much more rich user experience. And make sure that your experiences are short and simple. You know, users don't want to have to wait to hear the information they're looking for, or maybe they get the information literally two seconds in using your skill, and then your, your skill continues to talk to them over the next 10 seconds. Um, at that point, the user's annoyed that your skill's still talking. So maybe give them the most vital piece of information that they want, and then offer them, would you like to hear more? And they can say yes or no. And ask for reviews. This is, this is a little, little strange, because you kind of expect hey, I, you know, I'm using this skill, and it just begged me, basically, for a review. But that's actually not a bad thing. A lot of users actually enjoy that because they get a chance to go tell others how much they love a skill. And the best time to do this is at the end of a session, so when the user is finished with your skill, and doing it only after a positive experience with the skill. So for example, uh, I have a game out on Alexa, and I only ask a user to review the skill after they've won the game. If they lose the game, I don't ask them. And I also only ask them every four times they play. So on the fourth time they play, if they lost, they're not going to be asked for a review. But on the eighth time, if they win, they will. And also only do this for highly engaged users, uh, users who have come back to your skill time and time again. Clearly, they love it. Incentivize them or ask them. Not, don't incentivize them. That's bad advice. Uh, ask them to leave a review, because it's very likely that they will, because they love your skill. Now here's the good part. This is what you're probably all waiting for. How do you grow your user base? Your goal should be to end up here. 
This is the, basically the home page of the Amazon Alexa companion app when you go to the skill directory. Uh, this page shows a banner at the very top uh, where it features some skills on a weekly basis. And if you happen to land a spot in this banner, you're pretty much guaranteed to see at least a two times increase in your skill usage during that week. But it gets even better. If you can show up in the top enabled apps or customer favorites number one slot for the week, you're looking at a five times increase in users. And I've seen this repetitively throughout my skill building and analysis. Um, just landing that number one enabled spot or number one favorite spot is the most coveted thing that you can ask for. And here's an example of what it looks like on Christmas or the day after Christmas in 2016 for thunderstorm sounds when it was on the number one enabled skill slot. On that one day, I saw 60,000 users, which was up from about a measly 10,000 users. Um, so, you know, a six times increase, not bad. All right, now some SEO secrets. You guys are all marketers, SEO. Surprisingly, SEO with Alexa is kind of lacking. Traditionally, you would think, all right, I need to have a bunch of search terms that are going to be exactly what users search for. They're going to find my skill, and it's going to be rated, or it's going to be shown on the results list extremely high because I nailed my keywords. Well, that's not really the case. Uh, the same with number of reviews. You might expect that the number of reviews that your skill has plays a factor in its location uh, in the search results. And it may a little bit, but from my own experience, it doesn't really have much of a factor. Um, what really matters is the average review rating that your skill has, making sure that your skill is as close to that five-star rating as you possibly can, and making sure that your skill name itself matches what users search for. Um, surprisingly, this is probably the most important factor of the SEO experience on Alexa. Naming your skill to something that users are going to search for is extremely important. And then making sure that your skill has a high number of enablements, people who have said, Enable such and such skill. Not that, it, not that they're using it, but that they've enabled it seems to be a huge factor as well. And in Germany, I mean, quite frankly, you guys have the best opportunity right now because out of all the skills in the whole world for Alexa, only 7.7% .7 of them are in German. So the odds of you landing that coveted spot as the number one skill for a week or in the banner at the very top of the skill, skill directory, your, your odds are just significantly higher of being able to achieve that. Um, you know, in the US, there's about 17,000 skills. In Germany, there's about 2,000. So your odds are a lot better. And here are some things that you can do to get started. There's some Alexa, Alexa Germany events that happen on a regular basis. Um, there's actually one tonight at 7 p.m. It's an Alexa hands-on. I believe it's actually here in Hamburg. Seriously, um, where, where is it? Well, you know where in Hamburg? No. Uh, I don't know the location specifically, but uh, if you I want Google to, it. I Google yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Google it. Um, I think if you just search for Alexa Germany meetups, uh, I think the first result will give you exactly what you're looking for. It'll give you lo location, time, etc. Uh, and then on August 7th, I believe in Munich, uh, there's a voice UI meetup. And both of these events, you know, they're going to attract a lot of developers that are fluent in developing for Alexa, uh, a lot of enthusiasts, and maybe even some Alexa evangelists who actually work for Amazon. In fact, we actually have one here. Uh, Andrea, can you uh, stand up, wave your hand? Thanks. So Andrea was, uh, was kind enough to come out here and support, support me and the Alexa community. Um, and actually, come, come up here, come up here. He's the, uh, the Amazon guy for Alexa? Yeah, yeah. OK, yeah. So, so Amazon might have has some information for us. Come on. <laughs> OK, <laughs> very pragmatic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey. um, yeah, um, if you want to know how to build skills, tonight, tonight at uh, 7 PM, I think it's Winterstrasse. Uh, that's where the um, that's where the meetup is, and we'll be showing how to do some basic skill building. So feel free to drop by. I don't know how many seats there are available. Just check the meetup group. Oh, 
die Dame sagte gerade, dass bei Finanzcheck im Office scheinbar, bei Finanzcheck einer deutschen Firma im Office und wir sind alle eingeladen. All right, can someone translate that, please? <laughs> For me it, too. It's in, a, it's in a German, um, it's in a, it's a Hamburg-based company that, that hosting it, Finanzcheck, it's the name of the company that hosts it and everybody's invited. Awesome, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll let you get on with the rest of the presentation then. Ah, it's actually almost over, so you can stay here if you want. Um, <laughs> but take a seat, take a seat. We have some questions for you afterwards, probably. Just... Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably answer the questions, but uh, for legal reasons. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are several, I mean, how many, how many evangelists are there for Alexa? Do you know, roughly? Um, a bunch. We're a rare species. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch in the U.S., yeah. and I'm sure there's a whole bunch in Germany as well. And they're very resourceful people. If you have a question about the platform in general, um, or things that are publicly that are public knowledge, like how to build a skill, or if or if Alexa supports certain functionality, like playing an audio file, or how to play a video on the Echo Show, um, you know these people are around to help us do that. And they're extremely helpful, extremely resourceful, and just very pleasant to interact with. So thank so you. What does it take to support. do to develop a skill? If I want to do a skill. If I want to do a thunderstorm here in Germany, the thunderstorm noise that you do, okay. uh, how much will it cost me to develop that? Uh, if you're a developer yourself, no, or I, if you want to hire it out? I want to hire somebody. So if you want to hire it out, uh, I mean, the going rate can vary. Um, I would say anywhere between $100 to $200 an hour. And a skill like that can probably be done in about three hours. Three hours? Yeah, yeah. So skills like thunderstorm sounds and rain sounds, they're actually very, very simple skills. Um, And on that note, you can, you can roll them out fairly quickly. You can deploy them fairly quickly. Um, the development time for these things, um, with a simple skill, like I said, it can be three hours. With a more complex skill, like my deal or no deal game, um, that can be a time investment of around three weeks. So it really just depends on the complexity of the skill. Why did you do a thunderstorm skill? I mean, just for, the, for fun? Or, I mean, is there a business model behind it that I don't see? Yeah, good, good question. So I actually made thunderstorm sounds and rain sounds and all these sound skills because I had a really noisy upstairs neighbor in my apartment complex. And her dog would bark for literally an hour and a half at five in the morning every day. And I was like, screw that. Like, I want my sleep. So I had this Echo Dot by my bedside. And I was thinking, all right, I can just build a skill that plays some rain. And it'll block out that noise. So, you know, it comes to like scratching your own itch. So think about a skill that you wish existed or a functionality that you wish Alexa could do and then build that because the chances are you're not the only one thinking that Alexa should do But that. I mean, if you want to like include a message and then like sort of like push revenue somewhere else, how do you do it? What's the smartest ways to like drive revenue, drive traffic to something, to a brand, to like some other place? Yeah, um, I think the best example of that I could be if, if Jägermeister wanted to make a skill. I wouldn't recommend them calling it Jägermeister, because people probably aren't going to search for a, a type of alcohol in a app store. Um, but they might search for a drinking game. So make a drinking game and say, such and such game by Jägermeister. That way, you know, you're still getting your brand name out there, but you're providing an experience that a user is actually going to search for and have fun with. I mean, there might be a little bit of liability issues with that idea, but. Is it possible to like include Like, like with apps, I mean, basically a skill is an app for, for Alexa, correct? Yep, yeah. I mean, is there like something like in-skill purchase that you can purchase Jägermeister then through the skill? Not right now, not with Alexa. Um, Google Home does offer a way to do purchases in the voice experience. Um, and I'm sure it's probably something that Amazon's working on. But Amazon doesn't cover a comment on roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is, there, is there something like in-skill advertising? Um, so if you are a skill that primarily does music streaming, um, or I believe if your skill is heavily branded, then you can kind of mention your brand and offer a, uh, an advertisement for your brand. Other than that, if it's just a game or something like that, you can't really explicitly advertise. It's against policy. Um, And I know Amazon is, is working on ways to address that because that is a concern both for developers who want to monetize their skills and for brands who you know, want to build more brand awareness by releasing skills. Okay. okay. And then let's see, there was obviously like a lady from FinanzCheck that's hosting the meetup tonight. Let's say she wants to build a skill now for like a finance platform. 
can't you just go to any agency and you, your usual web agency can build you a skill or is that like a very rare person to find? Yeah, so I would say right now um, it's, a, it's a pretty rare person to find, but there are resources out there that can direct you for who to contact to build a skill. Uh, I believe Amazon actually has a page. Yeah, yeah we have a page uh, where we list companies and individuals that uh, are good at skill building. Okay, so if I can, I can go to Amazon and see who in Hamburg or who in Germany can help me um, develop a skill. Yeah. We actually have a skill builder that I know of in the audience as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tim? Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> All the way back there. He can build skills yeah. for you. Chase him. He's a skill <laughs> meister, so if, if you need skill help, just go to him. Yeah, shout out to Tim, Tim too, because he's actually doing me a huge favor and translating my deal or no deal game into German, so that'll be out shortly. Uh, thank you, Tim. Okay. okay, so maybe we go on with the, finish the presentation before we ask more questions? Sure, yeah, almost done. Uh, join the Alexa Slack group. So there's an unofficial Slack group for Alexa that, that's composed of about 1,100 developers, um, and we're here to help you. you know, we're all members of the community. We're not from Amazon. Well, some of us in there are, but, but most of us aren't. And we're willing to answer your questions honestly and truthfully and, and help you build your skill or even test it. So feel free to join that. It's alexaslack.com. It's totally free. Um, you know, don't feel obligated, but it's a very, very good resource for anybody looking to build a skill. And join the Alexa office hours calls. So every week uh, on Tuesdays at approximately 10 p.m. Um, CEST, there is a call with an Alexa evangelist who is there to answer questions. So you can, you can ask them anything, and as, as long as it's public knowledge and it's available on documentation somewhere, um, they'll, they'll be happy to answer, even sometimes when it's not public. It's just a question that's pretty straightforward. They're, they'll answer. Um, they're very helpful people, and they generously give their time every week to developers who are looking to build skills. Uh, so that's it. I'm Nick, and my company's Invoked Apps. You can email me at nick at getinvoked.com. Uh, now I'll open the floor to questions. Okay. Um, questions from your side? In English if you can. If yeah. not, maybe you can translate for me. Yeah. <laughs> Who has a question? Okay, then, then yeah. Um, Just ask the question. Alexa and Siri are connected to Bing and not to Google. How important is this? Um, so the search results that you get back from, from voice um, platforms, they're, they're, they're kind of generic in that, in that sense. They're not going to tell you, hey, the results from Bing or the results from Google. Um, I do believe that Bing powers, um, I don't know if it, if it powers Alexa, but it certainly powers Siri. Um, in terms of the kind of results that you're going to get back, if you ask a question, um, I would say it's going to be accurate no matter what. You know, Bing's pretty good, Google's good. Um, the biggest difference, aside, aside from the whole search, um, one thing you'll notice with Google Home is that the voice that gets used for a skill is actually different than the Google Home native voice. And that's just so users can differentiate um, when you're talking to a skill and when you're talking to um, a native function of Google Home, whereas Alexa uh, uses the same voice no matter what. I mean, there's ways that developers can kind of tweak that voice. But other than that, the experience is, is the same. What's, what's the biggest skill out of Germany so far? Do you know that? Uh, out of Germany right now, I honestly think that mine is the number one enabled skill right now, uh, sleep sounds. Sleep I don't know how to say it in German. Sleep sounds. <laughs> Schlafgeräusche. Yeah, yeah, I think do, that's do, it. Do you do that for babies or for, to fall asleep or what, what is it for? Uh, it's, it's for everybody. I mean, I've, I've gotten reviews from people who say they love to use it to help their baby go to sleep, but also adults use it, you know, to, like, to drown out noise from a noisy neighbor or they just find it more peaceful. Somebody who grew up in the country might want to hear some, some cricket sounds. Um, and just hearing that kind of brings them back and helps them fall asleep and relax. But there, there's no money-making scheme attached to that. I mean, it's just you, you enjoy doing these skills and you don't want to profit from that. You don't sell them. You don't advertise in them, nothing. Uh, I want to profit from them, absolutely. Uh, right now, it, it's very difficult to do that. Um, the only real way with Alexa right now is to implement a paywall. 
So a user would have to um, basically pay to even use your skill or pay an upgrade to get some extra features in your skill. Um, what I'd really love to see is some kind of um, revenue sharing model like um, Google with AdWords. You know, you can, you can put ads in your page and get paid. Something like, like that would be AdSense, great. AdSense, yeah. What's that? The, the AdSense program. Yeah, yeah, the AdSense program. Um, so the, there's a lot yet to be improved upon in, in the voice platform world, especially with, with Alexa and Google Home. Um, and I know that Amazon in particular is working really hard to make sure that whatever monetization implementation they put in doesn't destroy the voice experience. They don't want to annoy users with ads and things like that. They really, really care about making sure that users have the best experience possible. Okay. Um, would you recommend to brands and entrepreneurs here to start a skill now in order to grow with a platform? Is that a good idea, to be early days, or would yeah. you just wait a little longer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, start as soon as possible. Because like I said, in Germany, there's only 2,000 skills right now, roughly. So the earlier you can get in that game... Uh, 2,000, that's, that's a lot already, right? I mean, not really. A lot of the skills that you'd, you'd find in the skill store, both in the U.S. and in Germany, are they're, they're trivial skills. They're very simple. They don't provide a lot of value to a user. So you know, I, I honestly feel that the minute somebody deploys a skill in Germany that tackles a really hard problem or helps a user do something that improves their daily life, that skill is going to quickly rise to the top. Because, I mean, 2,000 might seem like a lot of skills in the market, but when you look at the quality of them right now, it's really not. Okay. More questions from you. Yeah. Uh, do you see any uh, not familiar with the, with the skills catalog? Are there any skills from content providers that provide kind of an uh, interactive experience with the users where you can request a specific uh, in-depth content and not just a generic news experience? Can you repeat the question first? Um, so you're asking, is there um, kind of like a, a, a brand name news provider yeah. who, who offers a more in-depth news experience? Yeah, where I can say, okay, I want to get more and more, and more details on this, uh, or less details on this, so I can tailor my, my news uh, feedback. Yeah, um, I'm honestly not entirely sure. I think there are a couple of those in the United States. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually tailor the news to that. But one thing that you can absolutely do is uh, enable, what is it called? It's a flash briefing skill. So flash briefing skills are specific skills that only respond when you say, Alexa, tell me the news, or you know, what's, what's new? And those flash briefing skills can be very specific. So it might be about technology, it might be about marketing, you know, it might be about the weather in some unique case. Um, so if you have an idea or you're a news company that focuses on a very specific piece of content, flash briefings would probably be a, a great avenue for you. Is there like, um, like a dialogue option like we have with the, the Facebook Messenger bots where you can really um, work on very detailed conversations and really enable the user to um, make its way through the interaction? Yeah, so more okay, of an interactive... Can you repeat the question for a minute? Okay, yeah. Uh, so you're basically asking, is there an interactive news app where you might hear a piece of news and then you can, then maybe the, the users ask, do you want to hear more about this or do you want to hear about this related article? Um, and yeah, you, you can absolutely do that. I don't know if any skills do that right now, um, but that would, be called, that would be called a custom skill. So that's just a traditional skill where you would pull in your news. Uh, you might read them a, a headline and then ask, hey, do you want to hear the full story? Yes or no? They respond yes and then you read them the full story. Or you say no, and then maybe you say, all right, well, here is a different story on a different topic you might like. Uh, you can absolutely do that. Yep. OK. One last question? No more questions? OK. You'll probably be all here right. for a while. There's the meetup tonight, uh, tonight, as we've just found out. Um, that's maybe a question to, to Andrea. Um, what do you expect, like, by the end of this year, how big is, uh, like, in terms of reach, is the biggest German scale? What's your projection? I, I, I can tell you from my own experience that um, Sleep Sounds, my number one skill in Germany, uh, I believe it gets around 5,000 users a week. Um, so it, it's, it's not like huge, but it is the number one skill right now. And that's only going to grow over time as more users, or more consumers buy Alexa devices and begin to use them in Germany. Okay.
Thank you very much. Right. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, one more really good question. Come on. You get a free echo if you ask, you ask me a really good question. Whoa. A really good question for an echo. OK. How much is that retail price for that? 170 bucks US. Okay. Seriously, no questions. <laughs> All right. Who's the, who's the best skill developer in the world? That's not a good question. That's a guy here. <laughs> I can answer that. <laughs> What's that? Be modest? Uh, if he's modest, he would name somebody else. Who, who's um, building really good skills right so now? So in the whole world, I would say that Joe Jaquina, um, he's a, a US developer. He makes really amazing skills. They're highly interactive. Uh, he made a role-playing game in the United States where you literally you explore this virtual world by saying, navigate north, navigate south, navigate east. Um, and that kind of experience with a, with a voice platform is just, it's kind of unheard of. It was the first time that I saw that. And the amount of work and detail that he puts into those skills is incredible. Uh, I would definitely recommend anybody who's thinking about building skills to look at his skills because the amount of detail is just, it, it sets the bar. Well, what's, the, what's the name again of that person? Uh, Joe Jaquina. Joe Jaquina. Um, and his skill is called Six Swords. That's, that's one of his more popular. Six Swords. Six Swords, yep. Okay, I guess that's it then. <laughs> 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 All right, thank okay. you.